I hardly have any time to see this presentation that I'm going to present. That's how confident my Alvin Go has on me. Worked on it last night. First thing I have is my little iPhone that has got this presentation. But he's confident uh, of this that I will deliver this subject because I've been thinking about it for 15 years. And that's why I'm not afraid. So this is a, a day in history I want everybody to share. And I hope you bear with me uh, to tell you and reflect a bit what this 4G internet Malaysia has is all about. A lot of people still struggle with this idea. Uh, what is 4G? What is this? What is that? So let me slowly take you step by step. And hopefully if you bear with me, be patient you will get it all at the end of, end of the day. Let's go back into history about information. Now, you heard about this 17,000-year-old cave in southern France, and you can see that there's a tribe that, that has a drawing, and, it, and the arrow points towards that animal that they kill. And that was painted in a cave. Whoever that could paint this wins, of course, because he can tell his tribe, that's where you must shoot. That's how we must kill this animal. Whereas a tribe that could not articulate did not win this battle. As that time goes by, this information is very powerful. If he can duplicate this drawing in different caves to different people and different geographic locations, he start to dominate the tribe because he could transfer this information on how to kill animals. That's how our civilization started. Now, probably you see this uh, picture. It's quite funny. Probably this is the early Facebook, where they start to get their act together, their kids kill, and they say, wow, this is, you know, I'll, this is pretty well. Probably uh, this is what a kid would look like if Facebook was already then. But they were interested in the survival at that time, and whoever survives and kills the most animal became the top tribe. That means the mobility of information always wins. The mobility of information, useful information, always wins. History teaches you. Let's move further. Then came the Chinese. The Chinese had 12,000 characters. For 12,000 characters, the Chinese dominated civilization for 4,000 years. How did they articulate? They articulate uh, drawings instead of in a cave. They, they draw calligraphically in their own way, watching movements, watching objects, and they wrote it on bones, they wrote it on tortoise shells, and when they could do that, and when they could articulate and transport this information powerfully and use it, of course, they invented paper, they invented many things, but they need 12,000 characters. So they were better than the caves, cavemen in the tribes, the drawing in the caves, but they need 12,000 characters to dominate. And they dominated the world till 1800s. Remember, China was the biggest economy in the world till 1800. Now, what happened after that? Came the 14th century. The Western civilization exploded. How did it explode? This time with only 26 characters. With 26 alphabets, characters, they were able to dominate. They were able to create enlightenment, scientific advancement, industrial revolution, imperialism. They could even conquer China, who for 4,000 years dominated civilization. 26 characters did that. So again, how did the Western power do that? Well, one of the most phenomenal inventions was modern printing, the Gutenberg Press. The Gutenberg Press, print, modern printing, printed the book. Now, a book could be transported and disseminated pervasively. Whoever that can harness this wins again and dominate civilization, either in, in, in anywhere in industrial world or in learning. Whoever that can take this information, this time in the form of a book, wins. So you can see the Western civilization with 26 characters start to dominate the 12,000 characters. In fact, the West 26 characters overtook Chinese 47,000 characters. The Chinese from 12,000 reinvented another 30 over 1,000 to articulate. But that's not good enough to beat the 26 uh, characters. 
right? And we all know we are living in that post that world today. Now, what's today's world? Today, there's now one language with two characters, the binary numbers zero and one. And with these two characters, zero and one, what can you do? You can squeeze the whole library of Congress, all the libraries of the best universities on this earth. You could squeeze all the museums from Gothenburg to any museum, all its knowledge. You could squeeze all of Shakespeare's play, all of it, today, because you could digitalize this information and move it. Today, we are living now, not caves, you don't have to paint on caves, not 12,000 characters, 47,000 characters, you don't need 26 letters, with zero and one, digitalizing information, what was once upon a time, what was once upon a time, information, the size of computers are very big. It need a whole Empire State Building to store this similar information. Now, can be stored in this. This, iPhone. All the information on the Congress Library, all of that that I talked about, that once used to be only stored in computers that were large, the size of height of Empire State Building, even that was quite difficult to imagine. Now, you don't have to imagine, it's now squeezed here. That's why Steve Jobs loved this. That's why Steve Jobs talked about the post-PC world. We don't need PC that's that large, the size of Empire State Building anymore. It's a post-PC world. That's why this Apple device has come about, to make sure that you are able to use that at the tip of your fingers. You no longer need an Empire State Building to hold information. You can hold it at the tip of your fingers. He loves this, the post-PC world. But again, this is a smartphone, right? Smartphone needs smart devices. Well, this is not a very smart way to communicate, right? Although you say, get smart. He, he's not very smart. It was one old way of communicating, clumsy. But this is the smartphone, not, not a shoe on your thing anymore. All right, so we have moved on. A smartphone needs a very smart network. That's what it needs. A very smartphone that has all this kind of information needs a very smart network. And in Malaysia, we have the smartest network on this earth with voice. You got to give us a clap for that. I'd just like to point out uh, something about our neighbor who is rated a top economy in the world, one of the smartest uncorrupted country in the world, Singapore. Nobody doubts Singapore's prowess as an economy, as a nation, uh, transparent, and as, wow, we just read that the OCBC Bank is the best bank in the world. And Singapore had three banks, in fact, that top the most strongest bank in the world. So nobody doubts their financial center prowess. Our neighbors, many of them Malaysians, right? What have they done today in their country? They have hotspotted almost the whole of Singapore. When they hotspot the whole of Singapore, what immediately happens? 72% of the people now have smartphones because it's Wi-Fi enabled, all right? So the Singaporeans now are very smart because they are on a hotspot. 72% of them are now carrying a smartphone because the whole Singapore, what well, not whole, lot, mostly a Singapore are hotspotted. In this country, we have done the same thing. We have hotspotted with our Y Max. It's a powerful hotspot. It's a 4G hotspot. This hotspot, the power is faster than Singapore's 3G. Five times faster. I cannot understand for the life of me if Singaporeans knows that they have a hotspot, even though it's slow in 3G, and they go very smart very soon by using smartphones. I cannot believe I cannot convince my Malaysians to go and use a smartphone to tap on this smart network, which is hotspotting with a powerful 4G network. It's not tomorrow, it is now. It is now, it is here. It's not something I want to do tomorrow, it's something that has already been done since November. Wake up, we have hotspotted. 
with this great 4G hotspot that is five times more powerful at least than the 3G, better than the Singaporeans.